Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at Profile Manager and we're going to look specifically at managing by devices or device groups. Now if you haven't been up on my uh, Mojave Server series, you may want to go back and look at the earlier screencast to see how we got to this place. Uh, I did cover in depth how to set up server and get started and walk through all of the steps of how to get Profile Manager up and running. So if you're at a loss just coming to this screencast, you may want to take a look at my channel at some of those other screencasts. Uh, in the last screencast, we talked about how to manage by users and user groups. This time we're going to take a look at how to manage by devices and device groups groups. So you can see here I've got my iPhone and I've got my uh, Mac Mini. In this particular screencast what we're going to do is take a look at how to manage iOS devices and then we'll look at how to do Mac devices in the next screencast. So if I just come in here, uh, here's my settings profile and if I click on edit uh, again I get this profile settings payload. Uh, again just a payload just means that all the changes that I make are bundled together and pushed to whatever device that I've got to make those changes happen. Uh, again in in the uh, individual uh, side of things, when I did users, here is where you would set up how you want the profile distributed, either automatic push or manual download, where they go to the My Devices screen. I just wanted to point that out just in case. But if we come all the way down here to iOS by itself, uh, these are the different iOS settings that we can set up for my iPhone. So the first is restrictions, and if I just click on configure here, you can see that all of the different functionality of my iPhone I can turn on or off here depending on what I want to have happen. And if, if I just keep scrolling down, look at all of the different things that I can specifically set up. And once I make these changes, they get pushed to the devices. So you can see that I've got all kinds of information. I can choose to show the today view or not in the lock screen, whether I want to show a notification center in the lock screen. Again, all of these different things I can turn on or off. Now you'll notice some of them say for supervised devices only. Now that would mean that I would set up a device in supervised mode, and I'm going to talk about that in another screencast on how to do that. Uh, I would have to do that through uh, um, Apple Configurator, and so I'll walk you through the steps on how to do that. So those things here where you see supervised only are things that you can't I uh, do uh, for your actual iOS device if it's not in supervised mode. Uh, so you can see everything in here though we can change, right? Allow documents from managed sources in unmanaged destinations. Uh, you can see here we've got uh, you know other information up here. Most of this you do have to have the device uh, supervised, but I just want to show you that's there. But we can and we can allow sync while roaming or not. Uh, allow share photo albums, uh, allow iCloud photos. And again, once I turn these things off, if I were to uncheck that box right there, then the actual photos app isn't going to be shown anymore or the iCloud photos component won't. Uh, and the same thing with keychains and all that. So you can see here, I've got a lot of things that I can do to manage this device. I can also look at apps too and manage apps. Uh, I can choose to not allow uh, the use of the iTunes store so that that's just not available if I don't want people buying things. Uh, I can also do things like not allow the use of Safari so I can just remove that. Uh, and then some specifics with Safari and things to block. I can block cookies if I want to and I can say always allow or I can always block them if I wanted to set that up. Uh, so again, there's a number of those things there. And then media content I can set up as well. And this is great for parents uh, or in businesses if you don't want these things set up. Uh, I can change it to, let's say, G rating. And so anything that is above a G rating will not be allowed on the device and won't be viewed. Uh, the same thing with TV shows. I can set the rating and apps as well. So again, I can manage that. I can choose not to allow sexual content uh, in Apple Books. And, uh, and again, not allow playback of explicit music, podcasts, or iTunes University content. So this is a great place for parents to come to protect their kids. Uh, you see here I've got single sign-on app mode. Uh, I can use uh, in, in this uh, section here. If I just click on that, again, for um, supervised devices, I can set up the different options here. And you can see these are all of the different uh, assist areas here that I can turn on or turn off. Uh, again, remember it's in supervised uh, mode. Uh, that's if you're going to lock to app. So that would be if you have just you know kind of one app that's going to show up on your iOS device, you would set that up right here. Uh, for content filters, if I just say configure, uh, I can use the built-in one and limit adult content, uh, or I can use one specific to websites or a plugin if I have one that I can upload here. Uh, the other thing is I can choose which URLs are permitted and which ones are blacklisted. So if I don't want my kids to see YouTube or something, I can blacklist it right here. 
Uh, when I come to domains, uh, again in here, I can choose any uh, unmarked uh, email domains um, that will uh, they'll be marked that way in mail. I can manage Safari web domains as well as uh, Safari password domains if the device is supervised, right? If it's locked uh, for me to supervise it. Uh, again, I can set up single sign-on if I have a single sign-on uh, certificate and everything ready to go. I can set up AirPrint uh, right from here. So I can set up a printer. If I've got AirPrint uh, printers on my network, I can put the IP address and resource path uh, in there for the particular printer so that it's automatically configured for my iOS device. And then I can do things like configure mail or exchange or uh, again, the uh, open directory server or contacts uh, and calendar, just like I could in uh, the individual screens. Uh, so, for instance, if I come in here, you can see I can set up my calendar server information in here. Uh, if I've got Google accounts, I can set up Google accounts as well and put that information in there. Uh, this is nice if I've got subscribed calendars. Maybe I have a corporate calendar that I want my users to subscribe to. If I put the URL and name and information in here, it'll automatically add that to the calendars app uh, on the iOS device. Uh, again, like I showed you on individual, I can set up web clips here. So if I want a particular website to be an icon on my iOS device, I can set that information up right here and it'll automatically show up on that device. And I can also control the cellular usage uh, from here if I wanted to control that. Uh, and you can see the different uh, APN names, if it's data, default data, APN, that information. If I've got a server account, I can configure that in here. Uh, again, not quite as useful as it has been in the past when we were running a lot of services on there, but it is available if I want to set it up. Uh, this is nice as well. I can configure the home screen. So I can choose what's in the dock and what's on page one, page two, page three, page four, just by adding pages. And again, if I just hit the plus here, I can add an app, a folder, or a web clip. And I can configure what that home screen looks like so that it looks the way I want it to. Uh, again, network usage rules uh, I can set up here. Uh, so how managed apps use cellular data networks, whether they are allowed to do it or not. I can configure notifications even. And so I can set the notifications for different apps. So I can have the nap app name and whether I want those notifications to be set up and how I want them to be seen. Uh, so I can do that on a per app basis. So again, if I really just want people to focus in on things that I have for them, I can set those there. Uh, if I need, need to set up a DNS proxy, I can do that. Again, this is a more advanced thing. Um, if you need it, you know you need it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, and then a lock screen message, which is nice. So if it's lost, here's who you uh, report to and, uh, and all of that. And so these will show up on the login screen uh, of my device. In the past, you used to have to get a wallpaper and put that information there. Now you can configure it right here with a payload. And then the TV remote information on iOS uh, as well. And this is uh, for a list of Apple TVs that are able to be controlled with the TV uh, remote app. And so I would add uh, those in here if I had these AirPlay destinations, which I don't have any right now, but just wanted to show you that that's there. So that's how you control an iOS device. So these are all of the different settings that are specific to iOS itself. And so that's how you would do that. And then when you're done, you would say OK, and it would configure that payload and push it to your iOS device. I'm just going to click on Cancel here. Uh, I can also come in and set up a device group uh, for, if I just come in here, I could set up a device group, let's say, for iOS devices. So let me go ahead and do that. Just like that. And so I've got this uh, group right here. I'm going to go ahead and save it. You can see it's right there. And then you can see in the members area, if I just come here and hit plus, I can add a device to this group. And I want to come in here and add my iPhone. And I'm going to say done. And then I would just add all my other iOS devices in here so that if I have the same settings that I want to push to all of my iOS devices, once I have them all listed here, I can then set the profile up by the device group right here in settings. So it's a group setting as opposed to the individual devices that I did earlier. So that gives you an idea of how to manage your iOS devices using Profile Manager. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.